I accept the consequence. A, I have to accept the fact that the market could stop right here. Somebody in the European Union could announce something that would affect the euro and it could roll over and bam, take out my stop. And I will have given back a full 35 pips of what we call open position profit. Open position, meaning I have it right now. I can see it in my account. If I exited the market right now, boom, that money is mine. Now, some people look at that and say, well, you know what? Right now, it's the market's money. You know, right now, it's not a closed out profit like we have a tendency to look at in stocks. Yeah, it's not really a loss until you take the trade off, until then it's just a paper loss. So even that definition and perspective is going to affect it. Now, if I fear giving back that open position profit more than I desire the potential profit when it moves higher, guess what? I'm going to choose instead cover up market. Because the pain of giving that 35 pips back is more overwhelming than the pleasure I feel from making another 35 pips up to here. Again, emotion coming into play. Or I simply follow my rule of engagement in my trading plan, accepting the outcome. So traders, a monster monster part of moving from conscious competence to unconscious competence and again moving into the realm of consistent profitability is acceptance one of the parts in the manual you'll see psychology moving towards consistent profitability number one you gotta forgive yourself for past trading losses it's acceptance. Have you ever made a mistake any other time? You ever shanked a seven iron? Have you ever had a wreck? Have you ever run a stoplight? Have you ever blown it when you first tried to parallel park? Any other skill? So it's acceptance. You got to accept the fact that the course of action is not going to be absolutely perfect every single time. It's illogical. It's irrational to think anything else. We had the uh, basketball game, my little nephew, so I'm helping coach the team. Man, we get over there, and we got a bunch of six- and seven-year-olds. We're doing our practice 30 minutes prior to the game, and we show them our, our plan. Okay, we're running a stack on the right side. The guy that brings the ball down yells out stack, and everybody goes over. The other three players run over here, stack right there, pulling their men to one side of the lane. We then run one guy down around the stack. He comes up and is supposed to get the ball in the middle. We did easily 30 repetitions prior to the game. Bam, 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 bam. As soon as the excitement of the game hits, you should have seen our stack. We had guys running all over the place. Emotion, the excitement of the game, boom, everything that we just trained. Now, if we train that two more times a week for an hour repetition, but it was very, very clear. Sure, the stack was fine when there's nobody guarding us. The stack was fine when there's nothing on the line, no real points to be scored. It's just us and our team. So the power of moving to that unconscious competent level is being able to handle the emotions. Now, the simple part is, again, I could choose as a trader that a trade is just a trade. It has no meaning to me, no pain, no pleasure. I don't feel any remorse or guilt. But again, that's difficult. It's simple to say that, but it's difficult to practically apply. But I can train myself out of that. My signal is my signal is my signal. Over and over and over. Every single day, sit down and write down a hundred times. I'm excited about the opportunities the market will give me today. I'm here to trade my plan, and I believe that when I trade my plan every single day, the profits will always follow. What if you wrote that 50 times or 100 times every single day prior to starting the market? You're going to get to a point where you believe it. Initially, there's going to be some of that pushback, internal dialogue. Be, yeah, right. Ha, that's what you think. I don't know who told you that one, sold you that bill of goods. What were you thinking? I mean, has it worked for you up to this point? And if you feel a tinge of that when you start to do that or you start to hear me speak that, that's a signal at a subconscious level. Have you ever asked somebody a question, a rhetorical question? 
You knew the answer, sweetheart. Where were you last night at 11 o'clock? Well, she doesn't know that you were parked outside of the boyfriend's house. She was supposed to be at the movie. But you give that opportunity, she comes back and says, I was at the movie. That feeling that you feel right there when you know that what you just heard isn't true. Maybe coming from somebody that you care about, so you feel that disappointment or whatever. Same thing in the market. If you feel a little bit of uncertainty about placing that trade, it's only because you don't believe in the trade. It's not even necessary I believe in myself. It's just necessary I believe in the trade to the degree that I'll put the trade on. And with that belief comes the acceptance that it's not 100% accurate. There will be trading losses. That's the healthy way to approach it. So when we talk about the turtles, okay, and we talk about market wizards, the goal of reading market wizards and reading one of those interviews every day which will take you through about two solid trading months at approximately 21 trading days per month is not to try to figure out what kind of a system they used or anything like that. Instead it's to listen to them constantly say A they struggled before they finally got it. B most of them blew out multiple accounts. Some of them went bankrupt. Read the stories. Wow that's not unlike some of us. But more importantly they found what worked for them they stuck to it, and they still follow that basic methodology today. And then it was just about repetitions. But they all talk about the same thing. That'll help with the belief. Accepting losses and the consequences of trades, both past and active, is a critical part of moving to unconscious competence. Losses from a trader's past, a past with no trading plan or rule set, can adversely affect the present mindset and cause you to second guess legitimate future trades. Moving from conscious to unconscious competence relies on beliefs generated from the generation of your trading model. If 200 out of 300 trades were profitable, then losses are just an expected component and not a source of pain. Repetition and ongoing training are critical components to overtaking destructive emotions and fears generated by our internal fight-or-flight reflexes. Unless we retrain our minds to know otherwise, we will panic and retreat from painful circumstances. Belief can only come from acceptance of past mistakes and new behavior generation. Traders enter the profession with a belief system that says a loss is painful. That belief needs to be erased and replaced with a belief that says, not following my plan is painful. Mm -hmm.